you did, you used to come back to church and teach to us. I fondly remember you teaching us about the parts of the ear. And you did it um, so creatively. You had us singing about the pinna, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And I have never forgotten it. <laughs> yes. I am <have> um, collection. <laughs> Collection, you see the things that you do, they are impactful to the people who receive them, you know. And you do Praise it and God. you're gone, you're just doing your thing. But we always remember because we're a chief beneficiary, and I thank you. So, yes, man. So God. Praise God. Yes. All right, so I am gonna go and I'm, I, I, I hope I will be, I will hear you sing for us. Doctor, uh, about the ears, right? <laughs> As I listen live on Facebook, right? So my wife will take over from here. God Thank bless. You. Okay. Thank you. All right. So to the matter at hand, you have said in your practice that you have seen an increase in child sexual abuse over the period of the pandemic. Can you tell us some more about that and give us some stats? Okay. All right. So. Well, the well since January, in 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 my practice, or I should say in our practice, we have we have you know over the previous couple of months, we you know have occasional cases of child sexual abuse. Eh? Yeah. However, since January, we noticed that there was a dramatic decrease in the numbers. Eh? Um, yes. Actually, we had no no reported cases in our practice. Um, through to 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 April, right? Okay. Um, except for one in March. Okay. However, since since May, right? What we have noticed is that there have been a, a, a obvious increase. Okay. You know, quite dramatic. We're we're seeing at least one case per week um, for the past um, five weeks. Right? Okay. Even up to recently, even up to this week, um, well, last week, we, we have seen two cases. Okay. Right? So there's obviously an increase in the number of, of, of cases of child um, molestation. And what is very worrisome, too, is that we, we, we notice some of them involve minors. So we have 11-year-olds, okay. we have, you know, nine-year-olds, you know, molesting younger girls and that sort of thing. So okay. there's indeed a dramatic increase since me. All right. So before we get into that, I want you to tell us some more about abuse in general. What is abuse? And then tell us what is sexual abuse and how does that look differently from the different forms of abuse? Okay. All right. So All right. if I can just you know, start from the, 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 the back point. In terms of sexual abuse, Sexual abuse is defined as any sexual contact between a child and an adult or using a child for sexual purposes. Right. Um, in many cases, as adults, we don't think of, we think of sexual abuse as only penetration. Right. And, um, but what we need to be clear on is that sexual abuse includes inappropriate touching. Yes. It, it includes exhibitionism. All what right? is that's a big word? What is that? Basically it's non-touching, it's exposing, you know, of oneself to a child. Right. Um, exposure to pornography. You know, seems subtle and seem very benign. But yes. that is also, you know, a form of sexual abuse. Communicating to a child in a sexual manner. Yeah, right? sexual manner to a minor, and sometimes we see the children coming into the office, and they, they, they you know, the 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 words that they are using, you know, the type of, of of phrases and stuff, you know, that they have been uh, uh, um, exposed inappropriately. Right. And of course, penetration, which everybody knows about, but sexual okay. hands, are, you know, a wide um, area. Okay. So. Um... Do you see you in in your um in the clip that we saw circulating? It said mostly in girls. Do you find that um there is an increase 
in boys that it doesn't say that boys are not being affected but it said it's mostly prevalent in girls but are boys being dramatically affected too you know just to, you know just to make a little clarification in the yes. clip that you know has been circulating right um i was, was specifically referring to my practice all right okay. so we're not talking yes. about jamaica in general Generally. i don't have those statistics right? right and i suspect that it might be happening elsewhere but in our practice that's what we have been seeing okay um i would say all the cases that 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 we have managed um are girls okay, okay. but what we find from you know previous exposure and 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 and, and studies is that it's uh, a little more taboo for the boys to report, right? And it's the same for men. A lot of men are sexually abused, you know. Yes. But you don't go to a, a, a Jamaican police, you know? Yes. And, or, you know, and, and, and say that you're abused. The embarrassment, the shame, right. you know, and, and that sort of thing. So when boys are abused, they tend not to, you know, come as forward as quickly as the girls, all right? So I'm right. not saying that boys are not being abused, but right, what right. have noticed is that most of the cases are girls. Okay. Experience receiving. Okay, thank you for that. So who do you find to be the likely perpetrators? You mentioned earlier that you saw older kids abusing younger kids. And who are some other perpetrators of this um, abuse? All right, so the perpetrators that we are, are, are seeing are adult men, um, you know, as young as 15 and as old as 50, okay? Yes. And these are adult men um, violating four-year-old girls, six-year-old girls, you know, um, preteen girls, all right? So that's a profile of the, of the men that, you know, we are, we are, we are actually seeing. And what... Um, we have noticed too, and this has, you know, played out in all studies and stuff, the perpetrators are usually individuals that are known to the victim. Okay. Right? So we have people yes. who are cousins, you know, uncles, you know, are just very close neighbors to the family. Those are the ones that tend to be the, the perpetrators. Okay. Now, we, as you said um, earlier, you mentioned that males will be getting abused but they are not going to go to a jamaican police and report that right it's taboo how do you find that this taboo in our culture you know prevent the the, the cases of of sexual abuse from coming forward and what effect this might have on the victim okay um so definitely uh, you know uh, uh, and i'm not saying the police are you know are doing anything right personal. right just, 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 just giving an example about talking to you know another man another man right so it's, it's really a hard thing for men to do yes right? and um you know it, it, that being the case a lot of men um do not come forward and hence they do not get the help that they really need Okay. All right. So recently I saw, you know, a clip of a young boy. I think he was 15 when he was molested. He's a little older now. And he suffered such psychological trauma in silence. You understand? I mean, yes. the pain and the frustration in that, that child, that young man's, um, you know, life. Because yes. he wasn't able, I mean, when he spoke to somebody about it, you know, they, they misrepresented the situation, even his close family members. Right, so it affected him significantly, and what we find is that a lot of these um, individuals, if they don't get proper counseling and support, they end up being abusers themselves. Right, so it's really very important that we address these issues so individuals can get the help that they need, you know, so that we, we stop the cycle of abuse. Of abuse, absolutely. All right, so it, when how do you normally? come to that conclusion that a child is being abused i know some of them will tell you well do they tell you or it's during your um medical checkup then you have a hunch and how do you get that information out All right so just to give up some brief stats um it has been found that one in four women and one in four men report 
sexual abuse before age 18. Okay. Huh? And mm -hmm. that is quite appalling. That's from CDC. Meaning yes. that a girl will get molested eh? and, yes. and, and do at four and report or discuss it after 18. Eh? Oh, yes. um, 45% of individuals do not tell or do not tell anybody about the abuse until approximately five years later. Wow. Five years later. You know, yes. the shame, some of them, they are threatened. Yes. Uh, they, they, they are just afraid of telling because nobody's going to believe them. Right. Mommy's boyfriend, and if she tell mommy, you, you understand? Yes. Mommy's yes. going to you know, very, be very upset. And right. you know, both of them get kicked out of the house. Right. So they tend not to, to talk about the abuse when they get a little older and they, you know, the psychological impact on them, then you know, they might say it to somebody and then it, it, it you know it comes out. So right. Most people do not talk about it immediately after it happens. The, the children that we see in our practice though, um, they are they're talking about it um a little earlier than you know we saw. Um, before and that is why these programs are important you know okay. to educate parents to talk to children you know yes. about how to deal with these issues when 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 they're faced with them absolutely so since they are not coming forward until a later date according to that statistic how do you generally come to your conclusion Okay, so the thing with, with, with our children is that the parents usually bring them in, right? Right, okay. You know, so the parent might notice, um, you know, bleeding, right? Um, a changing behavior, okay? So a, ch a, 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 a young lady or a young man who has been sexually molested, um, if the parents are attentive enough, and you don't even need to be attentive, there's a change usually you know, in their behavior, in their mannerism, in their interaction, in their schoolwork. You understand? Yes. Um, and changing the way they communicate and interact. You start, you know, hearing them using certain sexual language and, you know, and certain tones, the way they relate to adults. Yes. You know, so there's a definite change. Some of them might be a little more subtle. So you might find a child Which wearing one? three pants, you know, yes. instead of one you know, are just expressing anxiety beyond what, you know, you're accustomed to. Yes. Um, so they might see a man passing and they just get very hysterical and that sort of thing. So right. you need to recognize and identify, know your child, first of all, and if there are changes like these, then try and find out what is happening. Okay, okay. so that do the appropriate intervention and do the appropriate, appropriate care. Okay. All right, so last week on our program, we had someone from the special needs community who spoke about her nonverbal son. And then that was a question I posed to her. How do you treat, how do you teach your child about sexuality? And how do you, how, how would he communicate to you if something like this is happening? So in a case where a child is nonverbal, it would be up to the physical um, check to tell you that that child is being abused or you know how else would you find out that that is happening the same signs like you'd say withdrawal or change in attitudes and mannerisms and so on aggression etc right and, and remember that a nonverbal child is not necessarily uh, she's different but not necessarily different from you know it's just that you're not able to you know, verbalize right, right. So using her sign language and you know um, 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 you know we'll, we'll, we'll say to the parent that something is going on but what we want to you know what we want from the parents or what we want from the children is that yes. they're educated um to the point that they feel free coming to mommy and say to mommy uncle barry touched me Right? right. I don't want to preempt your, 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 your questions, but you can tell me if I am. But, you know, we have to start from early saying to the child, this is the vagina and use the word va vagina. You know, in Jamaica, we use a lot of uh, terminologies to describe the private part. Yes. Right? Um, most of the time, the parents are a little shy, you know, discussing 
um, body parts with the children, private body parts, and they use these um, little terminologies, right? Don't be afraid to say right. to yourself, this is the vagina, this is the penis, this is the scrotum, this right. is the anus, right? Right. So what that means that when you get the children comfortable talking about their body parts like that, there's no shame, you know, they don't right. feel like, oh, I need to, um, you know, to hide yeah. the talk about it. They're comfortable to say to you, it yes. touched my breast, it touched right. my breast. Right, right. And what we find sometimes too is that the children, you know, especially younger children, you're trying to find out from them what happened. And the child might say, he touched my, use a terminology that, you know, sure, it's not sure. Funny. Yes, you understand? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a court of law and in, and in certain settings, you know, they're going to say, you know, what is that? You understand? And the child right. really point and stuff. So we need to educate them. As I said, as I said, one, so that they can specifically point and say exactly what happened. And two, so that the shame and that sort of thing associated with that, their body part is not an issue uh, when they come to the parent to say, somebody touched me. Okay. So talk to them from as early as possible, right? You right. Play, use those opportunities. This is your eyes, this is your nose, and this is your vagina. Right. Do it as early as possible before they start talking. Yes. Right? So that, you know, they get used to it. And used to it. Okay. So I have some guests online. I'd like to say good afternoon to all those who have joined our live. I see you, Anne-Marie Williams. Um, Yvonne Salki and my aunt Tia watching from the UK, Alicia Bell, good day, uh, Kevin Smith, thank you, um, um, and Alicia Bell is asking, how do you know if a boy is being molested, is it the same as a girl? I think you answered that already. Yes, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm similar. It's a little more difficult, you know, sometimes. I mean, with the girls, if there's penetrate, penetration, you'll see, you know, the hymen being broken, and you might see areas of irritation and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, you know, for the boys, you, you, the, 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 for us, you know, when we're examining, we look, you know, the anal and stuff. But um, that said, um, are children online or, or is it just adults? Just adults. <laughs> just just adults. adults. You know, yes. that said, some children, and we, we in our practice, we see that as well. Some children are molested um, orally. Okay? Yes. So you might not see anything at all. Eh? Right. And we have to, you know, basically rely on what the child says. When we okay. do swabs and stuff, we, 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 that's the reason why we take swabs from you know, the oral passage, because we have a lot of cases where, you know, they're trying to avoid and know that, you know, it will be... Yes, they'll up. get into trouble, right. 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 Thoughts, right? And of course, yes. touching, you know, fondling and that sort yes. of thing. You will not see um, anything physical, right? But as much as possible, children, we need to trust what the children say. If a child says that somebody, you know, molested her, you need to believe that child. It's a very big thing for a child to lie about. Children usually don't lie about things like that. Right. right. A child tells you something like that, a four-year-old, a young child, believe what that child says. Okay. So you've answered that question. Do children usually lie about these things? So um, um, this question is, some mothers are themselves victims of unresolved sexual abuse in their own childhood. And this oftentimes contributes to an environment of silence and shame. Do you encounter generational child abuse in your practice? This wow. is from wow. Sharon Moore. Sharon, I think you are either in the medical field or some psychological field or something. And that is such an excellent, excellent question. question. Because what we have found is that... <laughs> What we have found is that a number of the mothers, right? Um, well, all right. So what happened is that a lot of the mothers brought in the children and they did meticulously what we expected them to do, right? And then we wonder, you know, how you know what to do? And we find out that a lot of them, you know, as teenagers and, you know, and stuff were molested as children. 
quite a number of them. You understand? So they yes. literally know what to do. So they didn't bathe the children before they take them in. You know, they took the underwear. They took, you know, what we really need to get samples, DNA samples. And we we're like, wow, right? So that's a very good question. And a lot of the, 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 the mothers were uh, abused themselves. And we have some of the children, you know, in our practice who were actually abused um, before, right? So yes. a lot of them are actually coming on, on their second case of okay. abuse. Okay, okay. If a child is suspected to be um, sexually abused, do they go back home? Do Are they allowed to go back home? Are there some things, some checks and balances that you have to do? Right, so definitely we have to do, you know, our checks and balances. So we ensure, we do, you know, all the questions and the interventions to ensure that the home is safe, right? Um, so if we have, say, a child who was coming home from school, you know, and got molested, and we assess the home to be, you know, stable and, you know, then that child, the, the best place for that child would be is the home. home. They have right. done your, you know, assessment and investigation and ensure that the home itself is a, is a you know, is a, is a okay place. Okay. Right? However, if the child was molested at home, right, and you're not sure what is going on inside that home, um, what we usually do is to, to admit our children, you know, to a facility, uh, until the appropriate investigations are done. And we can be sure that when we send that, that child back to that home, the child is, is, is safe. Okay. Should, should the alleged perpetrator be also interviewed or examined by a physician or usually by you or some other physician? Uh, <laughs> all right. So, um, what, what we usually advise, right? If you, if there is a, if there is a situation, so the child comes to mommy and said that, you know, Uncle Barry molested me. You know, you know, using their terminology to explain what happened. What we suggest that you you do or the parent do is to not make an alarm. You understand? Yes. So in, in a large number of 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 of, of our little cohort. What we found is that the parent would confront the perpetrator. And you know what that does? Yes. He runs away. Yes. You understand? Yes. He yes. runs away and the police cannot find him, right? Yes. So what we you know, um, um, usually suggest is that pretend like nothing happened, right? Let them right. feel like you know, they're okay. Yes. And the authorities involved so that the perpetrator can be, be held and you know appropriate interventions um, be put in place okay what if the abuse is reported by a child to a teacher or some other prescribed person they don't uh, not by the parent to the doctor now what are the steps that they should take the fact of the matter is that in jamaica and is in most other juris jurisdictions it's it's um you're, you're going to be legally culpable if you do not report a case of abuse right away, right? Right. And you report it on suspicion, right? Or you report it, you know, if the child tells you, you don't take it on to go investigate yourself and to whatever, you report it and you allow, you know, the authorities to do their appropriate, you know, interventions, right? So in yes. each parish, we have a CDA, a Child Development Agency. We have SISOCA, right, um, which is the agencies that deal with sexual offenses and, and abuse, right? So you have those agencies that are specifically in place. So um, if it is reported to a teacher, she has to, um, you know, report it to one of these agencies so that it can be properly dealt with, investigated, dated, and dealt with. Okay. And you said upon suspicion. So even as a neighbor, if I look across my fence, and I see a little girl leaving out of a big man's house and he's just buckling up his pants, you know? And I say, no, that scenario don't look too right. Is it my responsibility to report it? It is. And as a matter of fact, I don't know how much uh, the charge is specifically, but you can be charged quite a sum if you do not 
um, report. And I mean, it's our, it's our responsibility not to protect your own child, but we need to protect children in general because today it's, it's somebody else's child, tomorrow it's going to be your child, right? And the fact Absolutely. of the matter is that I always say to my, my doctors, if we don't sort out this little boy properly, right? In a couple of years time, he's going to be the one who's going to be breaking in your car, you know, committing sexual offenses against you and your family, right? So it's our responsibility, a God-given responsibility um, to get these children sorted out, right? Um, right, so it's our responsibility to report and we all need to report. And as I said, um, we are going to be held culpable if we don't. Okay, so in a family where um, you have identified a child being abused and let's say the, it's a, an extended family situation. So it's an uncle and it's a big yard situation. Should other children in that household be also um, investigated or um, checked to find out if there is instance, um, instances of sexual abuse with them? All right, so I'm glad you brought up that point because um, before I answer the question, the most significant risk factor for child sexual abuse is found to be family structure, right? Um, children living with married parents, okay, biological parents who are both married, who are married, right? Yes. They are at least risk. Step parents or single parent is the next. And um, children living without their parents are next in that order, right? Right. What they find is that married people living together with their children the incidence of abuse is actually quite low. The highest risk are single parent with a part with a living partner that is okay. not, you know, related to the child. What they find is that that group or that children in that household tend to be at highest risk. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, what was the question again? Right. So what 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 should be done or what needs to be done? I mean, if, if, a, if a child is being molested in, you know, in a family, a lot of times other children are being abused as well. Okay. Um, we did a little survey. Well, not we did, but the survey was done um, with prisoners, persons who are caught, you know, molesting children are locked up. And they did an interview with them to try and find out what are the things that they look for in children right? yes. that cause them to target particular children. Because we find in a particular household, you might have, say, four children, and the per perpetrator select out one and probably right. can't touch the others. Right? Yes. So, uh, and, and these are some of the things that um, they say. Right? So the perpetrators, um, they say that they look at certain characteristics in children. So the passive ones, okay. the quiet ones, the ones who are not going to tell, the troubled ones, right? The ones that, you know, lots of drama and trouble in the family, disconnect between them and their parents. Um, right. The single parent household, broken homes, children who are very trusting. These are things that the perpetrators say, you know, that they look right. for in children yeah. you know so that they, they, they carry out their their behavior abusive behavior children with behavioral problem and children with intellectual disability so we find that children who um have you know some sort of intellectual disability children with down syndrome yes they are very loving you know yes. they are high risk you know for that sort of behavior so okay. we usually interview, you know, the other children in the household to, you know, just make sure that they haven't gone through a, a, a similar situation, whether whether in the past or right. in, the, in the present. All right. So in this case now, in addition to talking to the children about, you know, just to talk, come and talk with me, engaging them in that conversation and making them comfortable, how else can parents protect their children from this? devious, you know, ill. All right. So I usually, I thought about it and I said, you know, we need to start from the mother, right? So yes. 
mothers and ladies get an education, get some independence. Because what we find is that a lot of these mothers, um, they are totally dependent on, you know, the, 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 the gentleman who, who is the perpetrator, right? Right. Even if she talk up, she's going to be kicked out of the house. Um, she's going to lose her income, she, you know, and that sort of thing, right? Yes. So get some education, get your independence so that you can speak up and talk up and, you know, put the man out of your house. Yes. Right? Um, yes. That sort of thing. Um, limit the number of children because, you know, when you have a lot of children, the supervision and the care and the attention, you know, that you need to give them, somebody's going to get sidetracked in the long run, right? Yes. Um, active supervision of, uh, of your child, okay? And I put the word active before the supervision. You must know where your child is at, at all, all time. time. Okay? Um, yeah. Somebody said, set an alarm clock, right? Because you know, especially when you have a, a large family, you have a lot of children, you're busy, you're tired, you're going to school, you're doing yes. your PhD, you know, and that sort of yes. thing. Set yes. the alarm clock so every, say, 15 minutes, you they check on them. What is happening, right? Yes. Because a lot of times, I mean, we have seen it. The mother reports to us that she just went around the back to do something, right? And I'm just giving yes. you some scenarios. Right. And back around the front, the child is gone. Right. right. She's looking for the child, can't find, find the child. And when she find the child, you know, the child was, was molested, right? Right. Somebody right. was there literally sitting and watching. Watching and the child. And, and that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Encourage the children to talk and not shut up, right? In our yes. setting in Jamaica, children must be seen and, and not, not heard. be heard. In, My in God. more first world countries, we find that the children are more vocal. More, right? right. Teach the children that they can say no to an adult and it's okay. Right. You understand? So we are taught yes. that, you know, adults speak to you, you must listen and, you know, and that sort of thing. Yes. Teach them to say no, right? If right. It's vocal, if it's pasta, right? yes. whatever it is, teach them to say it's okay. If you're uncomfortable, no. Yes. Monitor the whereabouts um, of your children. We said that already. Monitor the TV and the gadgets. Yes. Right? Yeah, um, we know that we're in lockdown and you know everybody's on the computer and stuff. Monitor what they're being exposed to. Right. You know, and that sort of thing. Yes. Right? Our children are naturally curious. They're going to right. want, you know, to see something they want to, you know, the friends send them things and they want to. So monitor yes. put um something on the phone to protect the children, to block certain things, right? Right. And intermittently just check. Check. I usually advise no gadgets in the rooms, especially for younger children, right? Right. You're not supposed yes. to be in the room, you know, on computer by themselves, right? Right. Um, you need to be able to monitor that child, right, as this thing is um, going on. Check out your caregivers, okay? Yes. You can't stop me because it's a long list. No, right? man, go on, go on. Caregivers, you have people looking after your children, you know, we're in lockdown, things are hard, you're running out down the road to go get some what and what and you say, Uncle, look after my child. You need yes. to be you strap them on you and take them. You need yes. to be aware of these people that you're leaving your children um, with. We said it before, if the child says that something happened, they leave Believe them. them. Yes. You must leave your child when they tell you that somebody touched them. Um, give them the benefit of, of the doubt. doubt. Yes. We talk about teaching them the body parts, using the appropriate language, and um, teach them about body privacy. Okay. okay. So, yes. Um, 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 so no showing, right? So you are not to show your body, you know, to anybody else, your private right. part, and nobody's to show you also, right? Right. A lot of the perpetrators, what we find is that they get involved in touching. So they ask the children to touch them. Right. right. A lot of times we tell the, the children, do not touch anybody. Right. And or, 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 or nobody is to touch you. Right. We tell them they are not to touch. Right. Okay? So yeah. teach them they're, they're not to be touched and they and, are not to touch. Right. To, right. Teach them to respect the privacy of other people from early. Right. You know, they're naturally curious. So they touch each other in the bathroom and whatever. Teach yes. them from early. It's not appropriate for you right. to be touching like that. Right? Yes. Um, teach that there are no body secrets, right? right? So the perpetrators usually say to the children, 
um, if you tell mommy that I did this to you, mommy is going to die or, you know, mommy is going to have to leave the house and mommy going to leave you somewhere and, and, you know, I'm going to hurt you, right? Yes. Children, there's nobody's secrets, right? Right. You, you talk, you tell um, if somebody did something to you like that, right? Right. A trusting relationship with your child, okay? If yes. you If you get into the habit of abusing children, being aggressive towards them, and they don't trust you, they're not going to come to you and tell you when something happens, right? Right. So, 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 so make some time during the day, okay? That this is time between mommy and daddy, uh, sorry, mommy and child, daddy and child, and we just talk about anything, right? Yes. It doesn't have to be, can be, you know, how you felt at school today, what happened when yes. you were on the bus, what, 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 you know, right. talk to them so they feel comfortable expressing, you know, if something should happen to them, right? right. Teach them not to take gifts, right? Mm -hmm. This yeah. applies to our teenagers, right? Yes. Um, you know, they give you a sweetie or they give you, you know, a chain or they give you a watch. A gadget. A gadget. Yes. You need to find out where you where got it came it. from. Where it came from and let the children yes. know it's not okay, right? A lot of the perpetration, perpetrators, what they're doing is kind of priming and grooming. Right? Yes. And it's a part of the grooming. Um, so you need to prepare them that way. Teach them yes. how to escape. All right, I'm going to stop on this one, right? Eh? Okay. How to escape. Escape. What I yes. find is that I, I did a little survey in my office, you know, um, nothing formal, but I kind of said to the, the little girls that come in, and the little boys too, um, do you know that nobody's to touch you here and there? And they say, yes. Eh? And then I say to, to them, what should you do if somebody do this? You know what the response was? 90% of the case? Run? No, I don't know. Okay. And I found that pretty alarming, right? Eh? So yes. when we say teach them how to get out of a situation, um, it's important to teach them don't touch my body part and don't do this and they're not to do this. But if it happens, what do you do? A lot of them freeze. They don't yes. know what to do. So tell yes. them to say no. You know, my thing is that cover their ears because the perpetrators, they're telling them, you know, uh, what and whatnot. Cover the ears and say, no, I'm going to tell mommy. I'm going yes. to tell daddy no. Right. What I feel is that when the children do that, it triggers this fear response because, you know, as far as they're concerned, the child is not so submissive. Remember, the one yes. that they like is a submissive, docile one is not going to talk. So right. if you have the one that says, I'm going to tell mommy, I don't want to hear what you want to say, and have to leave now and leave right away. Or I want to pee pee and run right away. Yes. Teach them how to escape, right? Yes. From the situation. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you for those. And I hope that our parents who are listening and our other friends are taking some points away that they can share with others to help our children to be more resilient. All right. We see Kevin here saying some of the mothers, when the child come to them, they say, your boyfriend or my stepfather rape me, they run them and say, I'm a relationship you want to mash up. And right there, the man is right and the child is wrong. Yes, we do. Um, do you find this in our culture where they are not believable, the children are shunned and the perpetrator is, you know, put us um, as on a pedestal and the child is shunned? Yes, definitely. Um, the good thing is that I don't see it happen as often as we think, you know, but when it happens, it's devastating, you know, to yes. that child. Because most of the child, the child time, the child continue experiencing the abuse. And some of the children are kicked out of the home. Yes. You understand? Some of them have to run away, you know, and that sort of thing, right? But if that happens, we encourage the children to talk to somebody outside of the home. Tell the guidance counselor, you know, yes. talk to a teacher or just call the police, you okay. know, call 911, call the Sissoka number, um, you know, um, call child registry, children registry and yes. report it. call the hospital or go to the hospital, right? Right. Um, but yes, that's a, a problem. And that's, a, that's why we said earlier, the ladies, them need to have their independence, you know, yeah. because a lot of times they're just afraid that, you know, they, they're going to lose their income, they're going to lose the house and, and that sort of thing. Okay. 
Just to punch in that the number for the children's registry is one eight 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 protect So just reminding parents and even children, if there are any younger persons on the live and you want to call in, um, you can do so to one eight 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 protect All right, so what about church? Do us as church folk, do pastors have any special responsibility when it comes on to teaching children about sexuality or people in church or is a church community? You know, that is, are they void of any of that responsibility or that's for school and for guidance counselors or for parents? Um, is there a role? I, I, I think they have even a greater role and a greater responsibility as far as I'm concerned, right? Um, what you find, though, in a lot of instances is that um, there's a cover-up, right? So um, the, the deacon did something, and because you don't want your church name to be out there, you cover it up, right? right. And what we find that people actually respect you better, you know, as a pastor or a leader of the church, if you, you know, uh, um, deal with that situation in the appropriate way. Right? You're not going to lose membership. You're actually going to gain membership. Right? right? Some right. people hear the way, you know, these hypocritical church people deal with the thing. That's when it causes a problem, right? Right. Um, so what we find with a lot, of, um, a lot of perpetrators is that they target places like the church. So you might yes. find them in the children's department of the church, right? Wow. So we need our, our, our church to provide a safe space for children, right? Yes. Do a lot of education, do a lot of checks and balances. Right. Actually, it should be routine to check out persons who are employed, so to speak, you know, to work with children, okay? Right. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really important. Church has a very very significant responsibility and as we said don't take it upon yourself you might feel that oh we need to deal with it from inside if if a child reports a sexual offense to the pastor the pastor has a responsibility to report it so that the persons who are trained um you know can do their appropriate investigations and get things done properly okay thank you so much all right so we are Coming down to our final 10 minutes, we are going to ask if our viewers have any other questions to ask Dr. Price that you do so now. Um, we're going to ask him to give his final um, point in a while and then tell us how we can reach him. All right, so, so type in your questions now. And we will look at those in a, in a minute. All right, so Dr. Price, any closing words, final precautions? I um, just want to say, you know, to, to parents, I mean, we're living in a strange world, <laughs> you know, for lack of, lack of a better um, term. Um, and there are bad people out there, you, you know, and if children are listening, the same, okay? We wish it was otherwise, but it is not, eh? So we're encouraging parents to be on the alert. Um, children who get abused a lot of time go through a lifetime, you know, of stressors, of anxiety, of relational problem, you know, that could have been prevented by just doing simple interventions, right? So we just ask our parents to just be on the alert arm your children, I've coined this term, arm your children to prevent them from being harmed. Right? right? To talk to them, you know, teach them what is appropriate, um, even appropriate language. You're around somebody and he's an adult and he start talking about certain, and children are, are smart, right? And yeah. teach them to get out of the situation. And if it does happen, you know, it happened already, um, report and get help for your child, right? If you report it to somebody who you think um, really should intervene and they're not doing their appropriate intervention, it's your child, take it to the next level, all right? But do everything possible to get that child sorted out and to make sure that child is safe. Okay. Um, one question from me is that it 
when we talk about sexual abuse, it's like naturally our brains go to girls. And uh, even as you spoke, most of the responsibility are placed on the mother. I don't know if you are aware of it, but we're nurturers and it's natural, right? But is there a role for fathers to play? You're a father yourself and you're an exemplary father. How do you find that, you know, being that sort of father in your household helps to differentiate you yeah. from other households and what, yeah. what other roles can fathers play to help to stem this tide of abuse? And that's an excellent question. Uh, one of the reasons why, you know, we emphasize the mother is that in Jamaica, we have a strongly matriarchal, you know, um, family system. And in, in, in our little, um, uh, the number of cases that we, 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 we managed, every single one of those households were single parent, and guess who the single parent was? You understand? Mother. It was a mother. But very important, you know, the fathers have, um, a role to play, you know, in educating, you know, in doing all the things that we talk about. Protecting. Uh, pertaining to the mother. And also that statistics, you know, when I saw it regarding um, the home setting being a risk factor for abuse, you know, where it says that the household with a mother and a father married with a child is the lowest risk um for abuse of any kind i mean yeah. yes you're gonna have you know um situation it doesn't mean a hundred percent but right. it's the ideal situation you know? the ideal situation that's what mm -hmm. god um, prescribed for us and you know it works right so um you know fathers treat your your your, your wife well you understand you're teaching your boys how to treat a woman right um, a lot of men in our society, they um, treat women like chattel. You understand? So they respect their mother, you know, right? But, you know, they pass out the road and, you know, they, they call out the girl like, you know, a piece or whatever. You understand? Right. And they, yeah. they talk down to them and treat them. And, they, you know, when they start talking about what and what they did and that sort of thing. So yeah. it's the role of the father to teach the boys to be, you know, to be men. Because, you know, they're the, the, the major um, perpetrators, right? Yeah. To teach them to, to respect women, um, to respect women's bodies, right? To just respect them generally. And if we have a lot of fathers doing that, then the risk will, will, will significantly drop. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, we have no further questions. So we're going to ask Dr. Price to tell us how he can be reached. We have a case and we want to, we want a pediatrician right away. How can we reach you? Um, I don't think um, my email address. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Jamaica Joyce um, at yahoo.com. Okay. That's J A M A I C A J O Y C E. No, J O Y S. J O Y S. At yahoo.com. Yahoo Jamaica Joys. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Thank you all. It was another wonderful evening. And we want to say thank you to Dr. Price for giving us so much of his time. I know that. As a doctor, you know, your time is of um, paramount importance and we appreciate you taking this time to give back to the community in this way. May God continue to bless you and your work and your family and may God continue to bless Jamaica land we love. So Pastor Rose is back to pray for us. So, and, and thank you for, as well. thank you for giving me the opportunity you know, to do what we just did. And you keep up the, the, the work that you're doing. I will be praying for you. It's really good seeing you, you know, doing this. It's great. Thank you so much. And I just want to interject another memory because um, your wife, I saw her in the background a little. Um, Joy had me over when I was younger, perhaps about 12. And she started to do a little radio program. 
and she thought that I would be a good host. <laughs> you wanted to hear me at 12. Really? But look at me now. But she <laughs> saw it in me even from that. then. <laughs> but just give her my best regards. I will, I will. <laughs> okay. Okay, great, Dr. Price. I really, I really listening what and uh, very interested topic and uh, even how you respond to the questions. Um, it says you you know exactly what you're doing, and uh, we really need uh, persons like like you in our society who will help to educate um, us as parents and as leaders in different um, sector of the of our community or of our country rather who can be good gatekeepers for our children, right? Because I think that's one of the things we are lacking is good gatekeepers. We don't really have those who are protecting. We have persons who want to- Open the gate. Yes, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes they, they really open the gate unconsciously, you know, because uh, they, 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 um, parents sometimes forget their role as parents and as adults, as leaders, we sometimes forget or a role we think of convenient most of the time than a protection. Okay. And I really, really want to thank you for, um, for, for reminding us and, and, and uh, educating us as, um, as well um, during this one hour. Mm -hmm. um, let us pray as we close. So we, rather, I want to thank all those who are listening and we, we look forward for, to looking at your question. If there's any that we really need to address, we, are, we need to and forward to Dr. Price, we will do so. So we thank you for listening and participating. Okay, let us pray. Divine Father, we thank you for this one hour that we have spent together. Lord, we thank you for how you have inspired your son, Lord, the level of education, Lord, that you allow him to have, Lord, that he can not only keep it to himself, Lord, but he can share it with a wider community. Lord, that the entire nation will be, will be benefit, Lord. Lord, and indeed, his job will become easier, Lord. We are seeing a man who is not afraid, Lord, to educate people so that persons will come to him less, Lord, with this situation that we are discussing. Mighty God, we pray that you will continue to inspire him, continue to inspire your listeners. Lord, for those who have listening and they have some fears, Lord, we pray you will help them to overcome their fears, indeed and to be able to address the situations in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you so, so thank you, much. Dr. Price. Again, was yes, a it was and our I'll pleasure. I'll be listening in after this. That is a okay. send the link. <laughs> okay. 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 Sure. All right. Great. Thank you. Have a great All afternoon. Bye-bye. Right. Take care. Bye-bye.